Hey everyone, uh, my name is Joe Ramstead and I had the privilege of uh, observing and interviewing one of my coworkers uh, for this assignment. Her name is Kaylee Pratt. Um, I am really excited to share about what an incredible educator Kaylee is. Um, to get started, Kaylee is in her second year of teaching. Uh, we were able to add a second and third teacher at our school uh, last year and she was one of those people. Um, and since she's been on board with us, she's had so much enthusiasm and energy for what she does every day in the classroom. And um, when I was given this assignment, I wanted to find someone who had just as much enthusiasm for working with kids as I do, and also um, somebody who has really good relationships with students, because something that I'm always trying to improve upon is my ability to connect with my students. And I know um, Ms. Pratt or Kaylee does an outstanding job of doing this based on what I hear from students and also just um, what I know about her as a person. So. Um, Kaylee has known ever since she was a, a child that she wanted to become an educator and um, becoming an egg teacher was actually pretty natural for her too because she had a lot of uh, experiences with livestock growing up um, in her youth through FFA and 4-H. Um, and as I started to um, have a conversation with her about um, some of the interview questions that I came up with for the assignment and then also some of the things that I saw in the classroom observations I was able to conduct, um, three key themes kind of emerged um, within her teaching philosophy. And I'm going to break those down uh, very succinctly and briefly for you guys today. And if you have any questions, just feel free to reach out or comment on this discussion forum. But those three areas are routine, rigor, and relationships. And the way I kind of broke down here on the poster is um, I have a little nugget about what that means in terms of the philosophy that Kaylee has, uh, what I was able to observe from her, either in the interview answer she provided and also some of the evidence I saw within the classroom. And then also some connections to some of those learning theories that we've been able to unpack here this semester. So I'm going to briefly touch on those three and then provide some concluding remarks at the end. So uh, to get started, routine is one of the first uh, key areas of the philosophy of education that Ms. Kaylee Pratt has. And um, one thing I really appreciate uh, walking into Kaylee's classroom is that she has the objectives on the board. She has instructions for the students and the students know to check there at the beginning of the class period. Um, so they know what they need to accomplish, whether that's an expectation of a guest speaker that's going to be in the classroom, or maybe she doesn't want students to have their Chromebooks up for the day. She has that written on the board and students know exactly what to do when they come in, and that allows for seamless transitions. And uh, within her classroom too, she uses a lot of routine and using very similar assessment throughout um, the curriculum, whether she's teaching the middle school classes or the high school classes. And these assessments allow students to have a lot of choice and variety in what they explore. Um, she's very constructivist, and that's something that I was able to learn about her very quickly um, as we were doing our discussions. And just from what I've known about her working with her over the past year, um, she really likes to leverage what students know and provide students with the opportunity to build upon that knowledge uh, through her, her excellent curriculum. Uh, the second thing I want to focus on in her teaching philosophy is rigor. And we know that rigor is something that's very important for us as educators, uh, one of the most important things that we can do within our classroom. Um, but she really tries to create consumers that are critical. Uh, consumers of information. They're not going to believe everything that they see on Facebook or on the internet. They're going to know what to decipher right from wrong, and they're going to know how to conduct a good Google search and not just go for that first link that they see. Um, and she also provides access um, to equitable resources for all of her students. She likes to provide accommodations and modifications that would be available just to um, maybe IEP or five or four plan students to all students in the classroom and all learners um, so that they're able to all succeed and have that access. And um, she has a lot of experiences working with uh, people with disabilities and special needs students um, inside and outside of the K-12 system. And she uses that to her advantage in creating a curriculum that is uh, all students can be successful in. Um, I was able to see this through um, interviewing and talking with her a little bit more and also in her classroom um, and seeing the collaborative culture in that classroom and seeing how students who might have been struggling were getting help and assistance not only from Mrs. Pratt, but also from the students who were uh, maybe done with the activities a little bit sooner. She also had very clear visuals, and this is supported uh, very nicely through cognitive load theory. Um, she has PowerPoints that are very similar in structure, don't have too much color or clutter. That's something I try to improve on too, because I love words and information and text, and her information is very clear and concise, and she understands that um, not all students are going to be able to comprehend or soak in and absorb all the great information that she's sharing um, if it's just thrown at them in a variety of different ways. So she's very strategic about the words she uses and also in how she's displaying that information for her classroom. I also have a lot of other theory connections with rigor, but that's the one that I wanted to focus on uh, specifically. Earlier, I mentioned that rigor is one of the most important uh, attributes that we can have as classroom educators, but I would argue that relationships 
is the most critical and important uh, thing that we can capitalize on as educators. Because while we want students to walk out of our classrooms being informed consumers and knowing uh, the truths about American agriculture, um, we also want students to walk out of the classroom knowing that they have a supporter and mentor in us as teachers. And Kaylee does a phenomenal job of doing that. And I saw that not only in the answer she provided in our brief interview before the observations and um, how she wanted to you know, focus on creating an inclusive and positive environment for her students and um, being student-centered in everything that she does as an educator. But I also saw that in the classroom and in the way that she interacted with the students using positive, reaffirming language, um, just the conversation she was having with students. You can obviously tell that she's built a positive and great relationships with each and every one of them, um, while also providing a classroom environment where students can build relationships with one another in a collaborative and uplifting environment um, that's also fun and also productive. And that is very hard to master as a teacher. And I think that uh, Kaylee is definitely on her way to doing that. And it's I look up to her a lot in the way that she builds relationships with students. And it's something that I'm trying to grow in uh, myself. And that's part of the reason why I selected uh, Kaylee for this assignment. And I learned a lot from observing her and um, interviewing and chatting with her about um, her teaching philosophy and everything that she um, values. And uh, additionally, with her relationships with students, I also noticed that she does a great job of incorporating culture within her classroom. Um, as a middle school animal science teacher, she has lots of opportunities to talk about byproducts and the history of agriculture. And whenever she can, she tries to bring in as many opportunities to talk about um, cultural norms and values, especially as they relate to livestock and animal production and even animal byproducts. Um, she also does a great job of modeling what it means to be a good citizen through her culturally responsive teaching methods. Um, whenever students maybe make a mistake or a fault in terms of culture, she's not afraid to correct them in an appropriate and tactful manner. And that's something that I, I appreciate a lot in Kaylee as my coworker and as a member of the agricultural education family. So overall, Kaylee is an outstanding educator. It was a great opportunity for me to learn a little bit more about her through our uh, half hour conversation after school, and then also through doing the classroom observations over the course of the semester. And it was a great opportunity to apply some of these learning theories that we've been talking about here in um, the teaching and learning theories class to the real world. And although we are virtual and we are not in person with this course, um, I do wanna thank you for taking time to listen to this presentation and hopefully um, you all also gained a lot out of your experiences working with your um, uh, teacher that you were able to observe. So uh, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments below. Thank you.